Howdy, and welcome to Physical Geology Rock Kit Orientation Video. Yes, you are in ownership of a rock kit for this course. And how did you get that rock kit? Well, if you bought it from another student, you've got a problem. So in that case, I'm going to tell you that's not going to work. Sorry about that. However, if you got it from the bookstore as part of inclusive access, then you're in great shape because it should be a white box that looks like this with a black sticker that has a trilobite on the front that says Environmental Geologic Solutions, which is the new company that is the vendor for these rock kits for McLennan Community College. Not only is it a new vendor, there is a completely new way of packaging up the labs to make it much simpler, user-friendly for you as the student. Second, the order of samples is completely different than it was and will be for each semester, I might add. And third, the number of samples has changed. So important that you are on the same page with us on that even the samples themselves have changed. You may find some samples that have a random black dot on it. It's because inventory was purchased by Environmental Geologic Solutions when our uh, rock vendor decided to quit making these at the last minute towards the end of the spring semester. And so uh, Environmental Geologic Solutions needed to buy a bunch of this, so they bought kits from students and kits from the bookstore and use some of that inventory. Not all of it, but they use some of it to make this uh, kit that you'll be using. A little bit more about inclusive access. The inclusive access simply means this. When you registered for the class, a fee was attached to the course. So probably about a week or so before classes began, that fee registered on your MCC account. And it included both the textbook, which is a hard textbook, meaning it is not difficult, but it's a tangible product, right? It is a custom book, a one-time use book, and it is non-digital. So if you're wanting a digital book, I am sorry, it does not come in that. And number two is this rock kit. So all of your course materials are prepaid. And so all you have to do is contact the bookstore and they will either ship it to you or you can pick it up in person. And those materials are already at the bookstore. So when you open your box, you should see something that looks like this. You're going to see a stock card. It may or may not be yellow, and it may or may not say summer semester, depending on what semester you're watching this video. There is an important little label on the inside cover. You might want to check that out. There's some valuable information that you might want. And then inside, you'll notice that there are five large bags and one small bag. Please keep the stock card as your instruction card because it answers some questions about the kit. And in Brightspace, which is your learning management system, the information about this rock kit's there as well, including this video. When you get a closer look, you'll see that each of the bags are labeled by the specific lab name and number that they represent that corresponds to your practical geology textbook. And then the individual samples are also labeled not just by the lab number, but also by the sample or specimen number for that specific lab. So you'll have five large bags, one tiny bag with the testing equipment. Each large bag has a number of samples in it. And you need to understand that Minerals has 15, and each of the rock and fossil identifications have 10 samples, but you're not done when you finish those. You still have some photographs to identify images that are in a video that I have made for each and every one of these identification labs. And I give you lots of help on them. So I think you'll find that they are, are your more favorite of the bunch because you have more guidance. So this is not a good approach. Let me tell you why. While there's specimens in these bags, I just used some imaginary samples. And they're not really imaginary. They're actually samples from the labs but from uh, different labs, and I kind of put them on the bags. And no joke, as I was doing this, one of my cats decided to come and sit on my samples because they wanted to see what I was doing. What do you think happened? Yep, they got mixed up, some fell off. This could happen to you. You may not have a cat, but maybe you'll have a seismic event such as a kid that walks in the room, a roommate. Maybe you yourself 
uh, just accidentally slip your arm and these go flying and they get out of order. So I've given you the heads up not to do this. Take one at a time out, set it on your bag, identify it, put it back in the bag, then go to the next sample. This is not a good approach either, doing a couple at a time because look at how similar these are in color. And so you might not know which one is which. Just do one at a time like this. All right. When you start your, your lab that uses the kit for the very first time, it'll be Minerals Lab, which is section four in your book. So all the other labs that aren't identification involve something else and everything can be found in Brightspace. This is the only additional material that you're gonna need for labs this semester. So you'll get your Minerals bag out and your little cute rock testing kit over here. And I'm gonna tell you how to use that. So you will be using all of the testing equipment for every lab except for fossils. Why do we not scratch and streak and do all of that for fossils? Because we want to respect ancient life forms and it damages the fossil. So a couple of things about uh, your rock kit. You'll have a penny and it's modern day. You'll have a steel nail. You'll have a magnet. You'll have a porcelain white street plate that's not used. And then you'll have a glass plate. And all of those things you're gonna be using on every single sample. When you're testing for hardness, and when you read section four, you'll learn about Mohs hardness scale. And Mohs hardness scale is all about a relative, not logarithmic, meaning in orders of 10, um, for hardness. So in other words, if I have a hardness of one, it's not 10 times less than a hardness of two. It's just a relative scale. So. Each item that I show you here has a different hardness and eventually you'll get to the point where you'll identify items in your box or in your sample for minerals and you'll figure out the hardness of some of these items and you're like, well, how am I going to figure out even where to start? Good news, I've restricted the number of samples, names of minerals that you need to do. The same is true for igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic rocks and fossils. So all you need to do is look up the ones that I have, and you'll use a website called geology.com. For minerals, you'll start in minerals, and you'll look up all the items that I have listed, or minerals I have listed, and you'll figure out the hardness, the streak, uh, the name and color. And then if you do that homework first, this lab will go like a breeze. I Trust me, it's not that bad. So when you do your hardness, you'll notice my plate, glass plate, is not new. You should have a new one, or pretty new. And you'll see all the marks on it. Well, they didn't happen because I took a mineral and just did this action. You gotta dig, and you gotta make sure that you are pressing very firmly, harder than you think you need to do. So if indeed you are testing using the glass and I press this mineral that you see on the right picture against that and it left a mark after I brushed away the residue, then I would know that the mineral is harder than the glass plate. So how hard is the glass plate is five and a half on the Mohs hardness scale. So that means that my mineral would be like a six or higher. But let's say that after I do the test and the glass plate does not have an indention from the mineral after I brushed off the residue, then it means it's less than five and a half. So that puts it between a one and a five. And you're like, well, that's not very helpful. That's where the penny comes in. The penny has a hardness of three, at least modern day pennies do. And so if the penny didn't scratch it, but the steel nail did, that kind of narrows the gap, doesn't it? It puts it into the realm of like a three and a half, two, a five and a half. So that makes it a lot more manageable. Well, I'd say the penny didn't scratch it. Now we got even more information because that means it's less than a three. That really restricts what it could be. So typically when you're doing mineral to mineral or rock to rock and you're testing for hardness, Make sure you wipe away the residue on either one and remember which one you had in your right hand versus your left. I would put the mineral you're trying to test the hardness on in your right hand and then test it against another one. And that way you will be able to see which one left the indention or which got the indention. Always remember to wipe away that residue. This is all explained in section four. 
Then there's street testing. This is always kind of fun because you use this porcelain glass plate. Mine's used, of course. And you can see some white marks, some tan marks, even some ugly kind of greenish gray. Well, I kind of pointed a nail where I'm going to do the street test, and then I performed it. And you can see right next to the mineral where that kind of same color is. Most minerals don't streak the same color that you visually see. And many times they have a colorless or a white streak. So there is a black streak plate. They're kind of pricey. And most geology kits have simply just a white testing uh, porcelain plate for streak plates. So when I took that mineral apart, then you can see the streak. And if you know what mineral this is, it matches its streak. So mineral streak is super useful in determining what a mineral could be that you are working with. All right, one of the absolute most fun things about mineral or testing rocks in general, minerals and rocks, is doing what's called the acid test. Yep, you heard me right, the acid test. Some of my prior students would say it's almost like addicting. It's so much fun to do because if you get a reaction, it goes it fizzes and it makes just this fun reaction. And Oh, bummer, you're taking this class and you don't have a bottle of acid. What are you going to do? Well, I've got a substitute for you. Why don't you go get some vinegar, likely out of your pantry. If not, you can go get a cheap bottle at the dollar store. And uh, most acid uh, can be mimicked by using vinegar. Just get regular, plain old vinegar. If you can, put it in a little dropper like you see here. This is my little acid bottle. It's diluted hydrochloric acid is what it is. And this is what happens when you do an acid test. So I've got calcite on the left that's untested and then calcite on the right. And I circled where the reaction was. You can see it bubble up and fizz. And it's so much fun. And put this on everything, but don't drown your samples. Make sure you blot them before you put them back in the bag, get all the acid off. But you're looking for a reaction of fizzing, and all it means is that calcite, the mineral calcite is in that. So if a rock reacts, then it means that calcite's in there, likely limestone, because limestone's made out of calcite. So remember, as we're summing up, that you have five labs that you're doing from this particular rock kit. You have 15 more to do in this semester. It sounds like a lot, but many of them are not very hard. There are lots of virtual field trips, informative, but yet pretty easy. And others are more challenging, but there are only five of these. And they're really a lot simpler than they used to be. If you heard students talk about this from prior semesters, check out that lid for some valuable information and keep that instruction card all semester. Remember, you're only doing five. Labs 4, 5, 7, 8, and 10 using this kit. And there's only 20 labs. So what does that boil down to? Let's say you do not score well on your assessments for these labs, because you'll use your completed lab forms all semester to take assessments. That is not the case for your lecture quizzes. You should not be using those. But you will for your labs. And because it's designed that way, that you would complete the lab and take an assessment to see how you did. And that's the grade that's going to matter. Having said that, let's say you just flub up several of these. Don't do well. Well, your lowest lab grade will get dropped at the end of the semester. Same with your lowest lecture quiz grade. So maybe that only means you have one flubbed grade. Maybe you flub all five of these. All right. It's not the end of the world. It's only five of your lab grades. And lab constitutes 25% of your overall grade. So. It is super important that you do the labs though, because this is a lab science credit course. And second of all, you have a lab exam at the middle of the semester. If you haven't been doing these labs, good luck on that lab exam. It's gonna be a real challenge. So I want you to be successful. I want you to come away with the key components and I want to help you do that. That's why everything's so well organized. That's why we've taken great care to make sure that you have a good system in place for these identification labs. You'll be doing lab four for the very first time when you use this rock kit. And that's where I'll pick up when we start the video that corresponds to that lab. I appreciate your time today and being patient as I went through how to use this rock kit. 
if you didn't watch this and take note of what I'm wearing, first of all, the color of my shirt, that I have some lava earrings on and matching lava uh, necklace with some olivine here, uh, I might ask about that. If you ask me questions that were answered in this video because you didn't take the time to watch it. So thanks for your time. I appreciate it and glad you're in the class. Bye.